Afrika für Allmanns, Folge Nummer 9. And this week I'm joined via Skype by my dear friend Edwin Sostenes to talk about Burundi. Yeah, welcome to the show, uh, Edwin Sothenes. Thank you very much, brother Freddy. It's very nice to have you here. I will maybe start with a small uh, introduction of you. Um, we have met two years ago at a debating tournament in Istanbul, and um, you yourself are a master student in Turkey, actually, in, uh, in Ankara. Yes. And um, over the last two years, we have quite established a routine of um, yeah, discussing many interesting aspects of politics, specifically in the, in the African context. And you are actually um, the person also who, um, yeah, I wouldn't say uh, guided me, but inspired me for this uh, format, uh, since uh, we had together a plan at some point to, to do something similar, to introduce African nations to a German audience. And um, yeah, so I'm very happy now after, after a few episodes to have you on the show. And um, you're not from Burundi, but you are close by, right? Yeah. You are from Tanzania, yeah. but uh, yeah. maybe to start, What is your um, what is your um, relationship to uh, Burundi? Um, uh, I I wouldn't even say that. Uh, um, uh, first of all, let me start. Thank you very much for having me of, uh, in the show, and I'm um, quite excited. Yes, it used to be our dream, and uh, we are making it becoming tr true. So the realization of our dream. Actually, mm -hmm. I think it's not only my relation as uh, Edwin, a guy from Tanzania with Burundi, it extends further to you also. You know, uh, the German East Africa? It yes. Is, right, the German East Africa, like uh, Deutsche, Ost African. True, Republic, true. Like it used to uh, combine of uh, the, the, the current tree, uh, Tanzania, Tanzania yeah. part of it, uh, Rwanda and Burundi. So the... Uh, Yeah, we, we share a bit of history, like uh, in terms of uh, um, way back uh, after the partition and scramble of Africa in 1985, where you had the Berlin Conference. Uh, we happened to uh, be placed under the German rule, but unfortunately, after the events and outcomes of the First World War, um, the, uh, uh, Burundi was partitioned to, Joe, uh, to the Belgians. To the Belgians, um, similar to Congo, yeah? Yes. Uh, similar now to Tanzania, and uh, we went to uh, under to be under the British, British British people, but all it was under the United Nations. By that time, it was called the United uh, Nations Strategic Country uh, uh, Council. We also happened to share the lake, um, Lake Tanganyika, Lake Tanganyika. Uh, Burundi, Burundi, Tanzania, Zambia, and uh, Congo, and also we have a border with Burundi. Uh, it's quite like 200 uh, kilometers or so. We share a border. And um, unfortunately, uh, the borders that, in, that do not uh, symbolize the people are different. You could find many of the people on this side of the Tanzanian side of the border are also the similar people who are found on the Burundi side of the border. Ah, okay, man, now we are already so deep in the geographical uh, aspect. So that's a good point maybe to get uh, directly into the The first part, the geographical aspect. So Burundi, as you mentioned, um, we are more or less in the eastern eastern mm -hmm. part of Africa, as you've already given some uh, of the bordering countries, Tanzania, yes. your yes. To home north, country. To, to the north of Burundi, you would find a country called Rwanda. It's quite smaller like Burundi. Uh, to the western part of it, you'd find the Democratic Republic of Congo. It's quite larger. And also you'd find uh, the Lake Tanganyika, way to the southern and the western part of it, you'd find Tanzania. Mm. And I forgot one detail. You also have uh, River Kagera. Okay. The main main inlet to the Lake Victoria, which is also presumed to be the source of the uh, River Nile. So the farthest uh, point, the source. Ah, so so Burundi is connected via water Uh, with the Lake Victoria in the north. Interesting. Okay, so there's yeah. a there's probably as a the river Kagera because the river flows from starting from Burundi, Rwanda, yeah. it enters Uganda and then it comes to pour the water between the border of Tanzania and wow. Uganda. River Kagera, the farthest the farthest source of uh, uh, Lake Victoria, Lake, uh, the farthest source of River Nile, which yes. is Victoria. Now the 
farthest inlet or, or the biggest inlet um, 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 of water through Lake Victoria is River Kagera. Interesting. It's so, it also to Burundi. And so then, if you say that Burundi is the source of that river, I assume that you also have a very hilly or let's say mountainish um, uh, geography is in there, right? Yes. Um, uh, this part of northwestern Tanzania, Rwanda and Burundi is very hilly. You have hills, mountains, even though they are not that, the, the altitude is not that, uh, the, the altitude is not that high. Because for example, with Burundi, the, uh, the highest point is uh, 1,200 uh, 1, meters or so. Okay, that's but it's yeah, hilly. Yeah, not so high. hilly and it's very fertile. You have lots of rain. It has equatorial kind type of climate. Obviously, it uh, the precipitation, the rainfall, it would be high. So it would result to small catchments, rivers, and uh, yes, yes. I think it's important also to realize that we are not very far now from the equator, right? The equator yes. goes a bit through the north of uh, mm -hmm. Democratic Democratic Republic of Congo. So we are pretty much close by where the also the climate and um, the, mm -hmm. the seasoning are very similar to the one we have in the equator. So I assume that there's a very broad variety of um, of uh, agriculture to be produced, right? Yes, yes. Um, they, they they do a lot of agriculture, and uh, the main economic activities are centered in uh, Bujumbura, which is the Bujumbura, uh, okay. and yes. you have Gitega, Muyinga, and uh, sort of the like. Yes, for example, with uh, agriculture, um, the Burundian coffee. It's very popular also. Burundian okay. coffee, coffee. It's quite popular. Um, um, I was even surprised when I was here in Turkey, I was able to find Burundian coffee, but not Tanzanian coffee. Ah, so, so they are even more popular than the large neighbor uh, from Tanzania. <laughs> Interesting. That yes. is surprising. But uh -huh. in terms of cities, you already mentioned, uh, maybe to give us an idea, what uh, what population are we speaking here about for this? Um, I mean, it's a small country, uh, right? So. Um, the last census say that uh, they have uh, 10 million people, but yes. uh, the, the estimates of uh, last year, uh, it's 11 million people. Mm. So there's quite discrepancy of 1 million people. And uh, uh, with Burundi being small, because Burundi, according to its area and size, it's like uh, 27,000, yeah. uh, 830 so kilometers. It's like Haiti, I think, in an international comparison, just to give yeah. you an idea. Yes. It's quite small in the world. It's one forty seventh, um, but uh, in terms yes, of it's smaller than Bavaria, even. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's smaller yeah. than Bavaria. You'd wonder now. Huh? <laughs> Bavaria is quite larger compared to to to. Yes. But Sorry, I was interrupting. The Americans compare to. Uh, um, they said it's quite even smaller to Maryland. Even oh no, wow, it is tiny, Maryland. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, but, and, uh, you were saying sorry, I interrupted you with the population. Uh, Go uh -huh. ahead. The population is 11 million, uh, 11 million uh, uh, people, but unfortunately, um, 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 all 11, 11 million people are squeezed without uh, a, a, a small country. So you have the area density, like population, population yes, yes. is quite uh, uh, um, one among the densely populated countries in East Africa and um, in the world at large. Oh, wow. and, uh, you'd have also the ethnic comp composition. You know, in uh, countries like Burundi and Rwanda, ethnic composition used to bring a lot of issues. You'd have war yeah. and stuff. So the not the indigenous people of um, um, Burundi are called the Tuas or the Pijamis. Tuas. I, 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 for me, to be honest, maybe to give you my naive approach, I always thought that yeah. it's the same like in Rwanda where you have Hutu and Tutsi. It's not. Yeah, the yeah case. you have them. You have them, but let me start. I, I started farther. Like okay, uh, I yes, said, please, from please. this, you have the Tua, uh, the, Tua the indigenous people. Okay. Are, now the population has plummeted. It's like one percent, one percent. But they are quite small, like shorter, like the Eskimos in the uh, uh, Greenland. So okay. the are quite like that. Now, after some times, you know the 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 Bantu migration which came from the Niger-Congo Cong area, migrating to eastern Southern Africa. So you that came along uh, with interaction with some Nilotites who came from northern Sudan and uh, Egypt areas. So the mix brought the, Rwan, uh, the, 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 the Hutus and the Tutsis. But uh, the Hutus and the Tutsis, they used to live together with 
without any uh, problem. But the problem came when uh, the Belgian um, um, colonialism, uh, the colonial administration um, established um, the forcefully identification between the Hutus and the Tutsis. Uh, with this description, like if you see the people, they are not like you, there are no distinctive features which could differentiate between the Hutus and the Tutsis. But the commonly what they used to do, the Tutsis are quite taller and uh, thin. The okay. Hutus are square and shorter. So it's a very um, yeah, uh, superficial uh, yes. differentiation. And, yeah. uh, according to the population, like the Hutus comprise about 85% of the Burundian oh, wow. population and 14% uh, is left to the uh, uh, Hutu, uh, to the, no, sorry, 85% is the Tutsis. Really? No, I'm, I'm, oh, sorry, I, I missed it again. 85% is the tu Hutus, 14% yes. is the Tutsis and 1% is the Tuas. So the oh, in indigenous people is now just 1% left? Yes, the oh. indigenous, what I mean indigenous, I don't mean like the the they like with them they have been there for longer period okay so the more whatever. historical uh, yeah. uh, cellular, historical. historical but yeah. they are, they have been residing like all the three tribes they have been residing in peace and tranquility for more than a thousand years back yeah yeah interesting yes. so now that we have maybe uh, started i mean you transferred already very smoothly into the topic of history Maybe then we can um, yeah, give it some sort of idea. You said already um, in the intro that there has been um, a colonial past also, but mm -hmm. before that was the case, was there already something similar to a, I wouldn't say nation, but maybe a kingdom or some uh, some territory that could be associated with Burundi? Yes, yes. Um, there used to be, there used to be like uh, societies where you'd have chiefdoms and uh, kings. Yeah. Now with uh, Burundi, um, um, it was not that centralized, but they had smaller areas where we'd have local chiefs. You know, chiefs would be like you'd have a king, and then later you'd have the chiefs who would ah, be the chiefs. Okay. Area. So like, You'll be producing certain produce where you, it will be uh, sent to the king, and the king would decide. So, um, uh, you know, um, when you talk of population also, or the, these tribes, you should also be able to distinguish, like, um, in um, by that time, in, Africa, pre-colonial Africa, there was a division of labor and who would do the, who would do which activity and what would be the outcome. For yes. example, you have the Tutsis. Most, most of them were the cattle keepers, like keeping cattle. While the Hutus, most of them were the agricultural. So mm. you have pastorists and whatever. So it was division of labor and uh, that was the issue. And then later, before the introduction of money, like the butter trade, the ones who would farm would exchange with the yes. ones who would produce the uh, cattle and the uh, cattle products. So it was like that. So there was a natural division already back then due to uh, the different professions. Uh -huh. but, but that was not discrimination. It was division of labor no, and sharing. Uh, yes, unfortunately, the forcefully, like the problems of Burundi and Rwanda came with the uh, Belgian colonial administration mm. where... So the, the, but that then, the, oh, sorry if I interrupt, but this was then very late actually because, you, I mean, first the Germans came, right? 1932. And, um, in the yes. German area. I, I remember from the case of your home country, Tanzania, yes. that also in the German um, colonial time with the Maji Maji rise, mm -hmm. there were also some significant um, yeah, um, uh, crimes being committed by uh, colonialists. Was there something similar during the German time in Burundi? Or do you happen oh. to know of? Um, they are smaller, they are quite underreported, but okay. you have like a person who would maybe uh, oppose the German, like uh, it was not that organized, like okay. individual people. So the documentation is little, or if the documentation is there, it could be smaller incidences. It was not like the number in Herero in uh, Namibia or yeah. the, the, um, 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 the Maji Maji incidences or the Maji Maji war, as we call it in Tanzania um, um, by that time. Yeah, so but then... smaller incidences and uh, you, you you know um, um the, the, the germans practiced what's called the direct rule direct rule okay direct rule so um they were able to it was quite effective it was not less effective at, at the start but it became effect, effective later because they are dealing straight with the people 
yes. that they would be able to uh, enforce their rules and regulations with which um, 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 they use the, the, the they worked with the kings uh, and to, to institute like the administration of the colonials, the okay. colonials they had. So different from what we later then see with the Belgians, they spoke to the king of that territory or the chief, as you mentioned, and mm -hmm. they didn't differentiate the people. They just tried to keep it top down, kind of. Yes, yes, th that's what they did. And uh, um, uh, that's where the discrimination and uh, uh, um, um, marginalization started. Because um, as I talked about the population, in Tanzania, mostly we don't care about the population, the composition and whatever, it's not a big deal. But um, in Burundi now, the 85% of uh, Hutu felt that they were marginalized. How did that happen? That happened because um, the, the Belgians seemed to favor mostly the Hutus. Uh, not I just small, uh, shortly clarify. So um, whenever we speak about uh, Rwanda or Burundi, always the majority, so the most share of people are the Bantu-based Hutus. Yes. And if we speak about the minority and the ones who were in favor by the colonial power of Belgium, we always speak of the Tutsis okay. and uh, they make up roughly around 10, 15 percent within Rwanda and Burundi. Similarly. Yes. yes. And uh, now, sorry, I interrupted you. Maybe you, you, you did not. Uh, OK, so it would be better. Maybe we put this key like when you speak of minority, we mean this, the majority we mean this yes. so that we don't confuse. And they, don't also forget the Pijimis, which are 1% the Twa. The 1% Pijimis, okay. Yes, but with them it was not, uh, it was not, they were not involved much in the um, uh, genocide and things of yes, that. Yes, 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 I assume, I assume. So um, one uh, small step before we jump into, so at the First World War, colonial um, uh, ownership, let's say, or colonial rule changed from Belgium to, from Germany to Belgium. Yes, that but is then it, was also under, it was under the League of Nations, which is the United Nations, the United Nations Trustship, because you know all the colonies which are owned by the Germans were sent to be to to, to be under the United Nations. But then later the United League of Nations or United Nations gave them the administration to others. For example, Tanzania were given to the British, Rwanda Burundi were given to 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 to, to, to Belgians and South Africa, no no Namibia was yeah. Into South Africa, Togo and Cameroon given to Togo France. was given to to, to uh, French. Yes, yeah. Yes. Okay, so we have this cut now in uh, let's say 1919, roughly about, and then the okay. Belgians come in, and um, they now have this giant territory with Congo as always, yes. plus mm -hmm. plus Burundi and, uh, and what? as well. So, mm -hmm. um, but what they, was a significant change for the people in Burundi when that happened? Um, um, you know, um, they used. That's after it was placed under the Belgians. So the Belgians found the best way to rule them is divide and rule. Yes. So they divide them further. You know, it's an old tactic, but it's still working. <laughs> it is working, unfortunately. I mean, every uh, place, Afghanistan, Syria, where you want to go, mm -hmm. you always find these mechanisms, yes? Yes. So um, uh, divide and rule. So um, most of the power was given to the minority. To rule the majority. Yes. So the uh, Hutu felt that their father marginalized. There are sentiments which happened ever since then, but these sentiments build up also until uh, when they are starting to achieve the independence. Mm -hmm. Like all so the when independence. Was that? When was the, when are we speaking about independence? Well, Burundi got its independence in July first, in 1962. 1962. Okay, so yeah. there was a time frame of roughly 40, 45 uh, years. Uh, 30 of years yeah, of, of, of yeah. quite like, uh, like, like uh, the, the, and, the okay, interest and things of like, uh huh. The Hutu. So the, so the whole conflict, which mm -hmm. um, derived mm -hmm. even up to now, is already over, or more or less over, at least the Belgium influence over for roughly 60 years. So yes. it's, like, um, it's a long time where that conflict has still been ongoing, although the, the cause for the conflict has disappeared. Yes, yes. Interesting. Actually, uh, the, 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 after achieving its independence in 1962, the monarchy, monarchy, the monarchy of Burundi, I talked about the kingdom yes. of Burundi now, yes. which was overthrown in 1966. Okay, so four years after independence already, coup d'etat. Yes. 
Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the ones who did the coup established the Burundi Republic in 1966. Okay, so the republic that we see today, so the, uh -huh. the legal framework is um, from 1966, I see. Yeah, from 1966. Um, uh, you know, you have countries, you would have this first republic, second republic, yes. whatever. Here it's we have the republic, republic. it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> from the kingdom of Burundi as now. Long as, it's republic, of Burundi. as long as it's republic, all good. But um, no, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm curious because um, then uh, going by the logic of uh, the majority of Hutus, they will be in charge, right, in a, in a democratic election. Yes. They will run uh, the country. Yeah, yes, after, now, the kingdom mostly had, uh, um, 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 it was in the hands of the uh, Tutsis, the yes. minority during the majority. But thereafter, now you would have, um, 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 after declaring the, the de declaration of Republic of Burundi in 1966, you would have the, uh, most of the presidents, like they came from the Hutu, but uh, you have mm. series of uh, and a bit of skirmishes amongst the, 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 the ruling uh, elite of that country. And uh, um, the bigger issue now occurred uh, uh, in order to settle the issues between Rwanda and Burundi, like they called a conference in Tanzania, the neighbor country, like in Arusha, whereas um, 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 they, they, they they signed some um, 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 accords to establish peace, and um, the first even the first democratically elected pre president in Burundi, like in the elections, they did the, they called for elections in 1993, and okay. the first democratic elected president. So 1993, was, that is like uh, so another 20 27 years after yes. we have the Republic of Burundi, we yes. see the first elected. So who was in charge before that? Um, uh, um, uh, but the name has gotten... Uh, no, 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 don't, you don't need to get stuck with names. I mean, mm -hmm. people probably won't uh, listen. Mm -hmm. The Google army, listening. the army by the that army, time... Okay. So was yes. army group. Yes, yes. I, I see. Because obviously, you know, after the coup d'etat, normally yes. the people yes. in charge are people from the army. So, but uh, now, um, the issue now, the bigger issue, which also results to the Rwandan genocide. It's like after establishing the peace accords in Arusha, and uh, Arusha, the president. 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, just to get it straight, okay. Yes, okay. Uh, you would have, you know, in order to achieve peace, you wouldn't have one meeting. You'd have a series of meetings. Yes, yes, so yes. Among those meetings, which was conducted in Arusha in 1993, upon finalizing the deal, the plane flew from um, 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 from Arusha going back to 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 Rwanda it was carrying uh, um, 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 the Rwandan Rwandese president given ah, that was the outbreak of the Rwandan massacre right yes ah yeah 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 i remember so this was related to burundi's uh, peace uh, negotiations uh, it, no it was related to both because all these issues you know I've told you before that Burundi and Rwanda, the similar issues. They used to they get face the yeah. similar issues. Even the population, the composition, even also being ruled by the Germans yes. later by the Be Belgians. It's yeah, the, you're right. It's very similar. Very similar. Yes. So um, 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 the marginalization was also in Rwanda, and the marginalization was in Burundi. Yes. So. Under the leadership of uh, African Union, and uh, you'd have also uh, by that time it was called OAU, and then you, you also have the previous president of Tanzania, Nyerere, and uh, a bit of uh, spearheading efforts of the uh, um, Mandela. They wanted um, 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 a permanent solution for these two countries. Yes. So after, in, after long so, years of conflict. Yes. So the plane was shot, carrying two presidents, and. Uh, after there now, you have the aftermath Rwandan genocide. Yes. In Burundi, it, it was not called a genocide as such, but it resulted to a civil war. Yeah, yeah. So wait, in People, Burundi at the same time, 1994, yeah. there were also um, mm -hmm. yeah, violations or massacres within Tutsi and Hutus? Uh, um, um, it is not referred as such in Burundi. You, they just call it 1993 to 2005 civil war. Oh, okay, so it was a, a, a 12 so year span. Fighting, oh my God, be, really? fighting, of, uh, uh, be, uh, fighting between various factions. 
within mm. the army, within the civil society in Burundi. It was not per se ethnical, mm. like the way it happened in Rwanda. Okay. Yes, even though the ethnic, ethnic, um, um, I would say the ethnic uh, um, 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 uh, events or whatever happened, yes. but it did not constitute as a genocide where you marginalize a certain group of people or the people who are mod moderate and then you kill them straight away. Interesting, okay. So, so, so just to get a rough idea, we have, if we start off with the colonial rule, um, mm -hmm. 1890 to 1990 to 1919 in Germany. Yes. 1919 to 1962 Belgium. Mm -hmm. Then 1966 to 1993 uh -huh. Republic of Burundi with army rule. And then 1993 uh -huh. to 2005 civil war. Yes. Oh my God. This is like, so they've basically just come to a, to a peaceful, happy life like 12 years, 14 years ago. That's yes. crazy. That's crazy. And, uh, and unfortunately, like before, before ninety, before uh, um, um, uh, 1993, like right? during 1993, they had only hundred year, hundred days of peace. <laughs> and then the civil war broke out. Oh, yes, yeah. and that, from 2005, they, they they signed also other accords in Arusha also the same, uh, the, uh, and uh, um, the government they formed a, a grand coalition between various factions and the government was sworn in under the current president. Pierre the current president, okay. Yeah, the current president is called Pierre Nkuruziza. Now, um, this guy uh, was a, uh, uh, um, never, the elections were not done, but he was selected to be president in 2005. In 2010, the election were called, he won that election, but the issue came in 2015, whereas according to the constitution, uh, post post civil war constitu constitution, which was um, signed or enacted in um, um, in 2005, yes. they said the president has two terms. Okay, so the limit. Uh, the limit was written. supposed to end in 2015, mm -hmm. but the president argued that we stipulated clearly that the election by the people, but. With me, the first election in 2005, I was not selected by the people. I was selected. Uh, so he made a small uh, play. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the issue of interpretation <laughs> came now. So in 2015, they had an election where you have the opposition boycotting, saying no, yeah. it was supposed to stand again. You, that's why the recent um, 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 issue or this, it was not a civil war, it's like the recent um, 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 and misunderstanding. Yeah, yes. Understand. So it resulted also to have a small uprising in Burundi, like two years ago, if you'd remember, whereas uh, um, some refugees ran to Rwanda, to Tanzania, Congo, and some until this moment, they're there. Interesting. So we have basically now come all the way until um, the present day and then I assume that he will probably try to be again elected in 2020, right? Um, the, the Mr. <laughs> because just maybe to give you my point of view, how I, I mean, to be honest, as a German uh, student, and although we always chat uh, every now and then and keep each other updated, uh, the only thing I recently came across with regards to the political situation in Burundi was that um, the president introduced a new election tax and he tries to enforce everybody, every household to pay him so that he can hold up his next election. So um, that was my most recent information uh, that uh, he uh, is trying to somehow cure his uh, budgetary uh, issues with, uh, with the people. And I mean, there's no like direct way to get taxes from the household. So they just go to the doors. And so it's a bit messy in that regard. But um, as you tell me now, he's technically not even legitimate to, to do that, right? It's illegitimate. It's Ill illegitimate to do that, but you'd have, you know, um, in many countries of Africa, the tax base is limited. Mm. Mostly, the people who pay taxes per se are the government employees. You'd have even the businessmen yes. evading the taxes. <laughs> so the people who pay the taxes are the ones who are paid by the taxes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. So, um, um, you'd have, for example, in 
certain countries where the um, I wouldn't like to go straight into examples, but um, you have certain countries with which maybe 15% uh, of the population is the one which pays ta its taxes to the government. And then this yeah. tax, 15%, it's expected to run all the services provided by the government for the 100% of the population. Yes, yes, yes. Which is yeah, I, I, I so see. Yeah. And, yeah. Why, why did I bring this up? I brought this up because most of the elections, in those smaller countries or countries which cannot be able to, 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 to conduct their own elections. In one way or another, they are donor, donor funded. Like you have the EU or okay. like Germany, the UK funding, um, giving a certain grant for an election to take place. Yeah, I mean, it's in their interest. They want to establish mm -hmm. democracy, civil democracy, yes. so they try yes. to promote elections. I see. It's not only to the interest of the EU and the whatever, it's to both people. I mean, because yes. Of the democracy, obviously, yes. would uh, get rid of the um, 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 genocides or conflicts or civil war yes. which are likely to happen. Now, after the issue of uh, in 2015, this, this quite like civil war or like uh, 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 um, that incidents where the president clung on to power, the EU and other countries. They cut off the donor donations and uh, uh, subsistence um, 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 help. So, with regards to that, the money to run for uh, to, to conduct elections and things of the like became limited. So, the president or the government had to think and um, establish new ways in which they could get the money or the resources to conduct the election. Perhaps ah, so we are seeing now a process where the West, as such, or the EU, is reducing its support for yes. Burundi, and um, they have to self self supply their own their own taxes. Hmm. So, what is the cause for this? May I ask? Um, what ha what happened to the West that they suddenly stopped to support Burundi? Obviously, the, the uh, obviously it's the lack of the democratic democratic transition. Because mm. many people expected that the president would be vacating his his position, giving um, 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 a rise to a new leader by 2015. But the problem now came with the interpretation between uh, those two accords. Like, I'm a president selected by, by the people, or I'm the president selected by the Accord. Yes, yes, yes. That yeah, makes a difference. Mm. Yes. So, and I, I, I assume, or you may be able to tell me more better, um, that at some point also everybody, including the West, including maybe also the people in Burundi, they look into their neighbor country, Rwanda, which, as you told us, has so many similarities in terms of history, but now does so much better in terms of, um, at least in terms of prosperity of the of the economy that they probably also feel that hmm, what's going on here we could achieve so much more as as Rwanda for example has done so where is our part of the of the of the cake you know is that maybe also a reason um that could be a reason you know um uh, many people uh, uh okay whatever you'd ask any history historian or politi uh, politician or somebody who is involved into politics, like an analyst, would tell you that dictatorship is bad and actually nobody would accept dictatorship. But uh, currently there have been many school of thoughts where they would accept a certain form of visionary dictator. Yeah, we say so in German um, development dictatorship. Yes. In terms of visionary dictators, now you'd have a person uh, like Paul Kagame. He would be placed there. Anyway, his, for example, in his country, like you'd have 97% of the electorate selecting yeah. him as president. Yeah, right. He so, is an official dictator now. We can say that, right? It's. I mean, yeah. I, I was always not sure whether that's a right way to describe it, but okay, yeah, then obviously this cannot be a role model from from the western perspective <laughs> but the people what about the people do you think maybe they they have this thing that they look into what the rwandan population gets from uh, from their system and they um, think why, why can't we have somebody similar you know um gen generalization is not a good thing yes they share they have many things in common but also there are certain uh, characteristics or the path which rwanda went through like a real genocide, yes. and the path yeah, went right. to 
suffering. So the memories and uh, the suffering which we inflicted to the people's mind and heart. Are You're right. Yes. I guess. You, uh, you especially since Kagame, sorry, yeah, to interrupt. Uh -huh. Especially since Kagame derived out of the genocide, right? Uh -huh, so, uh -huh. it's a so completely uh, different system. Uh, right, yeah. At one point in time, the Rwandese, I think, under the leadership of Kagame, they have decided that enough is enough. Yes. Yes. We would be limiting maybe the position and whatever, but it's for the better good. We want to ensure that Rwanda is somewhere. So that particular thing is not reflected in Burundi where you will still have some clashes between the opposition uh, factions and also with the government. And sometimes you'd have even certain factions with which they would splinter out of the army and cause issues. This particular thing also happens in Rwanda, uh, but uh, um, uh, because the guy is in solid control, like the repercussions are not that much greater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, yeah, sorry. You'd have even uh, certain, uh, you, Burundi also produced refugees. You'd have refugees in Belgium, um, 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 Germany, and jo some European countries. You're yes. right. There is some, uh, I actually remember even some uh, Burundi friends of mine. It's, I mean, it's such a small country, you will not expect many of them to make it up all the way to Europe. But you're right. There's actually some, mm -hmm. some so th that was caused by the civil war, then I assume, yes? They uh, yes. fled, fled from Burundi. Mm. But the brighter side of it, you know, uh, most of the African countries have the young base, like yes. the majority of the young people. So this is the opportunity with which, in terms of resources, human resources, they could build upon in order to ensure that um, 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 they reach a certain success. This is not only for Burundi, it's for all Africans. Yes. But unfortunately, there is less of industries or less of economic activities which are, we, are, we are generating as Africans. For example, in Burundi, mostly they, they're dependent to, uh, to um, um, limited farming. Like they, they farm, they produce their own food. So sustaining uh, farming, yes. Uh -huh. Fishing also. Okay. Um, it, has, it has resources. Uh, for example, like uh, they, 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 you, you won't believe it. They have uh, uranium. Uranium in Burundi. Uh, wow. Copper, cobalt, platinum, um, 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 uh, gold, tungsten, kaolin. They even have limestone. Damn. Without so, I mean, without having a cost, you know, they, they, it's a landlocked. Yes, country. yes so it's landlocked. It's landlocked. We didn't mention, but that's important to know. And again, Edwin, I think I don't need to be a moderator anymore because you take away all my job since you gave the smooth transition off from the topic of politics into economics. Mm, mm -hmm. There is indeed uh, something uh, I was uh, also uh, thinking about. Um, what is the, the, the situation with the east of Congo? Because I know that the east of Congo is a particularly um, natural resources rich country. Is that mm -hmm. also the case for Burundi? Is there some uh, economic um, wealth potential, for example? Um, they have potentials, but you know, when you talk of East Congo, East Congo is quite a vast area. East yes, Congo yes. starts from Central African Republic borders. It you're goes right. up to the borders of Zambia. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. It's uh, huge. Huge. Be because let me, let me start ma naming the countries between Central Republic of Africa and uh, to there. Be to, besides Congo, like Central African Republic to this, the north, uh, western northwestern teeth below it you'd have sudan south sudan below oh. it you'd have uganda you'd have rwanda burundi tanzania zambia mm -hmm. so you it's see crazy. it's crazy yes malawi Zambia. brother malawi right yes and uh, uh yes you'd have malawi but unfortunately malawi is be sandwiched between zambia um um um, um tanzania and mozambique Okay, so, but I think we we understand what you are trying to say. So yeah. the comparison say, between Burundi well, and East Congo is like... We have resources in Burundi, but uh, the, the uh, I mean, the, I mean, the, the bigger picture which you have in Congo, in terms of geography, the wideness, like um, a distribution is quite different. Like in mm -hmm. Burundi, it's quite smaller, 25,000 
uh, square kilometers. So it's quite smaller and uh, but, but, yeah, um, uh, economically they have certain potentials, but uh, um, you'd also have this issue. Most of the um, natural resources in our countries, unfortunately, many people do point um, the finger to the colonialists or the mining companies, the big mining companies which have uh, their operations in our countries, but they fail to point the same, you know, you'd have a, a, a hand, you'd point one yes. thing to the yes. uh, uh, Europeans or Americans who yes, yes. lead these companies, but three of the fingers, they face us, like <laughs> in terms of our leaders, because yes, yes. companies don't wake up from nowhere, like I'm going to Burundi, I'm going to mining. They, when they reach there, they would find the, the ruling elite, which would be yeah. comprised of the politicians, they would cite them, uh, fake deals and things. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, maybe to the government coffers, they would offer a little percentage. So the majority of the population would not benefit, but rather the, the benefits would be entering the coffers of private, like private people. Who yes, yes, yes. So the elites. Yes, the elites. And the problem is then also, I guess, they um, even strengthen their position by that, right? Mm -hmm. Even mm -hmm. hard to overthrow them then if they have all these uh, income sources. Yes. How do you, just because this reminds me also of another question I, I had uh, is in my Ethiopia podcast, um, my interview guest uh, uh, Ramon Shak also brought up the topic of the uh, huge um, involvement of China in Africa that we see these days. Is there something you would say that uh, Burundi is um, being involved with China or not really? Not that much. Not that much. But, uh, not that much. It exists, but not that much. Because, for example, I was checking on the statistics of Burundi. Um, um, uh, they say like the South Asian you would have, uh, anyway, I'm not sure if the Chinese are classified as South Asians. No, no, no. South Asians normally is like Pakistan, India, Bangladesh. Uh -huh. Now with them, they are like 2,000 in Burundi. Okay. Uh, Europeans are quite like 3,000. I did not get, I did not come across the uh, statistics of Chinese, but yes. it's quite limited. Yes. You, you have like uh, many Chinese, the way you have them in Kenya, Tanzania, or Ethiopia. Uh, they are there, but uh, it's quite limited. But I would like to speak of one thing, like mostly if the West doesn't embrace you as an African, yes. now these many uh, elites go to the East. Yeah, East. of course. That's the... So for example, now, you know, the hands of the West are quite trying to squeeze Burundi. So in like a few years to come, it might find itself in a position with which it will have to impress further the Chinese. Ah, Even okay. though the colonial, uh, the traditional colonial powers like the Belgians and whatever, they still have a certain amount of uh, a limited influence to, 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 to Burundi compared to the um, countries like China or India. Um, okay. My question was to you now, um, since we've spoken about a, a lot about Burundi and there have been some uh, yeah, negative sides as uh, in regards specifically to the democracy and or at least let's say the current political situation. What do you think could be a, a positive outlook for the future of Burundi? What do you or what motivates you? You have mentioned already the, the gender inequality is, uh, is not a big issue there, but maybe some other aspects that you feel um, are promising within Burundi. Oh. Did I, did I spoke about the gender inequality? Like when I, um, I say like the, you have uh, the legislature, the parliament, the, ju the, and the judiciary. Like yes. for example, in the legislature, uh, which I think that this is one among the things which uh, countries like Turkey and Europe, even America could learn from. Uh, you'd go in Burundi, 42% of the members of parliament are women. Wow. So 43% yes. of women uh, yes. are elected. Um, yes, in, to the in, 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 Yes, you would have uh, maybe 30% a women quota with which um, it should be there. They should be represented. So that's one among the brighter things which uh, um, 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 Burundi is working on. And uh, it could also be an example to other countries. Yes, Definitely. 
with Burundi being a landlocked country, we have the standard gauge railway project, which is yes. on, in Tanzania to link uh, Burundi, Rwanda, and perhaps even Eastern Congo with the port of Dar es Salaam. So there's a railway project. Oh, uh, ask who's, uh, in, uh, who's Yes, the construction is going on, like uh, <laughs> to link, you, you obviously, you know, Tra most trade is conducted via the sea or the oceans and uh, the sea roads. So, um, yeah. um, in order to make sure that there is lots of trade and how do countries develop, it's through trade, export, import. So, with especially when uh, export is done further, uh, because the sea is quite cheaper compared to the la land and uh, and of and uh, I would say also the air transport. Yes. So this so project this can is easy. Uh -huh. Sorry, and yeah, the, to the positive side also, can ease the transportation for goods. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. To the positive side, these infrastructural projects would also help not only to um, increase the export import, it also help to um, um, uh, to create jobs and uh, form a certain create form of tax base to the uh, uh, government. Because also it will stimulate trade, enhance the economic development Tourism in the country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But also, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, good that you mentioned it. Um, something uh, that might also um, be a future. Is there some sort of a African East African Union concept where, like maybe Tanzania or other Swahili-based uh, mm -hmm. uh, Swahili-based countries mm -hmm. uh, co cooperate? There's some economic yes. integration, or what is the situation um, there? Also, we have the East African Community place right now. Uh, this revived version was formed in 1995 and uh, in 2005 Rwanda and Burundi was in, were incorporated into the current version of East Africa. So Burundi is a member of the East African community and uh, yeah. by, uh, um, um, East African community you'd have a population of more than 200 million so there is some sort of a, yeah, so there's you have a common market, mm -hmm. common market, common, common movement of goods, like a certain sort of EU. We are not in an area, but and EU, but we are quite there because uh, there is free movement of and goods and uh, uh huh. Employ employmentability like being being employed in one country or the other. Yeah. And recently, uh, I, I think it was in 2013, if not 2015, South Sudan was also incorporated into the East African community, South Sudan. So it... Okay, wow. So then similar, uh, this then uh, seems that uh, in Africa, at least, uh, there's many areas where economic integration projects we had the episode of uh, uh, Benin with the ECOWAS uh, being mm -hmm. um, busy there. We have SADC in the, in the south. Um, we see in the Maghreb states even some sort of. So there is a um, sort of regional, um, let's say, union that um, it maybe also it's will be a positive factor for the. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, um, when the organization of African unity currently called the AU, African Union was formed in 1963, uh, there clashed two school of thoughts. You would have um, one was read by the former president of Ghana and his colleagues. They say that Africa, you know that time it was the spirit of Pan-Africanism. Let's unite Africa now. We form like okay. United States of Africa, the bigger one. But um, there was other school of thought, which was read by the former president uh, of Tanzania, Julius Nyerere, who uh, thought and said, like, uniting Africa at once, like everything is united, it will be a problem. Because even the bigger countries, uh, the kingdom of uh, United Kingdom, yeah, the kingdom of Britain, like the so-called United Kingdom or America, did not unite overnight. So what can we do? We can form the regional economic development organizations, Yes. And then, for example, the east, we have one in the east, one in the west, one in the northern, central maybe, and then southern. And then later, it will be so that we can bridge in these differences. And then later, it, it will be even easier 
to unite the, the, the these regional uh, development organizations in a certain period of time. Unfortunately, most people, most of the countries did not favor the United Africa now, like part 1960. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, it would stay. It would still take some time. Uh huh. Many favored the last, but unfortunately, like within that time frame framework with which it was placed, like after maybe 50 years, uh, war Africa to be united, it has not happened. But the efforts are continuing to happen. And uh, recently, like Burundi's neighbor Congo, also applied to join the East African Community. Oh, so, so that's, uh, some outlooks. And I, I guess, especially for small countries such as Burundi. If we look into the EU, for example, there also the participation of these minority countries um, increases significantly once they are on uh, equal uh, base with other uh, nations. Yeah, it's, it's good for the eye level, I guess, for these uh, mm -hmm. individual states. So that is also a very nice uh, outlook, I think. Yeah, so we can, um, yeah, be hopeful that um, the future uh, continues in that case. Edwin, I uh, already see we have uh, nearly one hour already covered of, of content and. Uh, I, I want to thank you, of course, in advance already. And, you know, um, the beauty with you is that um, you have a very profound knowledge, not only in your home or your neighboring countries, but uh, within the whole uh, continent. So I'm sure way before we come to your country with Tanzania, we will have another opportunity to uh, get your coverage on this. Any other uh, last things you want to get out into the into the uh, uh, scenery that we missed about Burundi or um, are we OK for now? Um, 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 there's more one thing like uh, the GDP of Burundi. Yes. Um, it's not that huge. Um, um, currently uh, in 2015 estimates, it was 800. 800 per person. It's a smaller country and uh, the population is huge, but it's somewhere there. It has a future uh, good outlook to move from the lower like uh, income country to a middle income country. Yes. And uh, um, 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 th they can um, increase their um, uh, cash crops, like uh, the output, coffee and tea, because yes. they provide yes. more than half of the uh, um, um, GDP, like the, in terms of exports. But also, um, I would like to note one thing. Burundi, even though it has some um, issues back at home, but it's one among the countries which contribute a lot to the peacekeeping in Africa. Like you have uh -huh. Amisom, African Mission for Somalia. Yes. The major contributors there in terms of uh, uh, personnel, like the soldiers yes. Yes. And peace, is Burundi and uh, Uganda. So yes. they have, uh, they, 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 they participate into keeping peace um, um, in other people's backyards, unfortunately. So they are so small, yeah. Even though they are small, but, uh, uh, but they help. And uh, you asked me about the future outlook for uh, potential for growth. Yes, they could improve uh, by eliminating um, 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 corruption because corruption there is a clear uh, there is uh, a clear link between corruption and poverty. So. Uh, Eliminating corruption would help uh, create responsible institutions, which we lack not only in Burundi but in other countries. Yeah. And so doing, it will help increase the household income and later at a national level, because also um, 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 they could uh, uh, um, um, work on that in a better way. And also, I mean, it, it, I, I think. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no it, it, I guess it starts with uh, with uh, public participation in terms of press and coverage and uh, free speech. So, I mean, these must be then probably the first things to to get um, solved. Yeah, the, the press coverage in Burundi, which um, I remember is also a very under censorship. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you're right. The first step would be then to target the corruption uh, issue. I agree. Mm -hmm. And one more thing, like in terms of energy. Um, it's, it could be, it's a challenge, but also it's an opportunity. You know, you have many German companies and uh, European companies would like, which would like to have a public partnership, public private partnership in order to partner and solve problems. So um, like I was looking to statistics a while ago, um, only less than 10% of the Burundian uh, um, 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 population or household are rectified. Oh, wow. So 
So there's a lot of people who need then, uh, power. Wow. Uh, big companies like Siemens and uh, the like, which produce solar or whatever. It's a challenge for Burundi, but it also could be an opportunity yes. which could be executed well in terms of public part private partnership. Perfect. So here's the shout out to all Almans listening yeah, who are related to the electrical uh, services or maybe some companies in there. Check out the opportunities in Burundi, such a vast market which has to get into access. I think that is a very nice way to uh, also include the, the German activity that uh, is required, I think, in many Absolutely. African uh, nations. Yeah, We don't uh, let everything there for the US and Chinese. So um, perfect. Thank you very much. I mean, you gave some some really uh, deep insights in terms of the history and uh, now also the other parts. And yeah, I'm looking forward to have you back, my friend. Yeah, we will stay in touch, of course. And uh, I would like to thank you very much. Also, I uh, it was come back to your, it was an honor to talk to you. Looking forward to meet you in the future. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. Have a good day. Warmly welcome. Bye.